mine's way long. Hello again and welcome to Manch Talk. I am Tammy Simmons Garthway. And I'm Carly Garrick and we are here today with good and happy yeah. news for so, a change. Yeah, usually Carla and I ta- used to tape on Tuesdays, so we were always off on election day and then we wouldn't come to you until a week later and right. by then the 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 fizzles a little fizzle. yes but um, but we're wearing red and i even brought yep, my red glasses um, so i will admit surprisingly <laughs> oh i love the words uh stunning upset well you know it's surprise I'm gonna take a so here's when the, well, um you know, what, you know what, i'm what just like hey, okay all right we'll, we'll so for up. everyone back home um, yes, let's give some results yesterday first. was election day here in manchester um there was an open seat for mayor i think that's important to remember there was no incumbent uh, republican jay ruway came out on top by 488 votes in the unofficial numbers that'll change a little bit um that was I don't know if that, if you can call that an upset victory. It's not that, it wasn't that, it was either or, right? Um, I did find it funny that, um, I think it was New Hampshire Journal said, you know, like they make it sound like, oh my God, this, the craziest victory, upset. And I said, well, actually, I think the biggest upset was Joyce Craig beating Ted Gatsis. If you're going to go in the last 10 years, that was much bigger upset than, somebody beating a non-incumbent you know what i'm saying it was an open sure. seat but it was just funny i'm like okay guys everybody well, slow but down I just think, a hair. i think you could say there's a national trend towards uh democrats taking over in, cities yes this is literally oh, the, the first time in 34 yes. years that yes. we have a republican mayor and a republican board of older well we have a split we don't have a majority i think well, we do no we don't um because you've got wards one Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten would be six. Okay, I'm counting ten, for a ten means eleven. Extra yep. So our yeah. Twelve would be six and Joe Lavaster makes seven. So we have seven seven split. No, we're six seven, aren't there's, we? Oh, there's fourteen of them. Okay, but then oh, it's oh the other more... at large, Dan O'Neill. Oh, so it is a seven. Oh, Will didn't make it. No. Oh. So there is a seven-seven split. It's not a majority. I mean, with, but the, with, the, with mayor, the mayor, it I'm is not, actually. Don't get me wrong. I'm not diminishing the fact that this is. It, it I is just huge. want to be optimistic and say nice things for a change. So oh, no. that's what I'm going I, with. I'm let's go- let's just, make you know it me, good I'm just news. Like, I look at data. I look at numbers. I look at statistics. I look at past. I mean, I can. T- I knew that that was historic. As soon as I saw it, because I know when the last um, we had, I think maybe a split, but it was before the alderman at large positions. And one of the people was real Penard and he was always undeclared. So, you know, like and that was in the, you know, like probably late 90s, 98, 99, somewhere, maybe 2000 um, when Dave Whibby and was and them were all on board. Anyways, that's a wonderful thing. I am thrilled to death that. um there is a some sort of change in Manchester now. And I think, you know, I, I mean, other towns didn't do quite no. as well. Nashua Na- didn't. And like um, other states didn't do it. Like, so. I mean, so, Virginia lost a seat. I, I and think, I think so, and, something happened in Ohio. I think they put, uh, legalized abortion into their law. I don't know. So, um, so I do think this is sort of a testament to grassroots organizing. Uh, and uh, look at I me. mean, I'm always the skeptic, aren't I? Well, so I, I look at the numbers. There was low turnout. I knew that when I voted last night, I went to, at five o'clock to vote. And I only had, this is my point of reference. You know how like you always have this one number. So years ago, oh, 2009, when Phil Griazzo won the alderman seat in Ward 10. So he was the first Republican ever elected in Ward 10. Um, he, I know there was more than 2,000 people that voted that day because I had been drilling it into his head that George Smith couldn't get more than 1,000 votes. Like, I looked at the data, and no matter what he did, he couldn't get more than 1,000 votes. So I remember it being like 6.30 at night and Phil looking at me and said, I think we just won. And I was like, based on what? We're like, what crazy idea? And I, he goes, because we just crossed 2,000 votes and you told me that George Smith can never get 1,000 votes. And I was impressed that the numbers I had been drilling into his head for six months had stuck, and he was correct. He had, he had got mo- garnered more. Um, so I knew that that in 2009, we had 2,000 votes easily in Ward 10. Um, at five o'clock or so yesterday, 
the vote tally was like 1290 and i was like oh that's low because I really expected there to be a higher turn, a decent turnout. There had been decent turnout in the last few years. So when I looked at the numbers this morning, and I'll keep in mind all of this is based on unofficial numbers because the city clerk's got to do all the, you know, they have to do the hand calculations of the absent, not the absentees, the write-ins and things like that. Um, but there were, I wish I had done the total total and I didn't. Um, almost every ward had fewer voters than two years ago. But isn't that fairly typical on off years? Like, well, so... no, I'm talking about city year to city year. Oh, city year to so, city year. So, for example, Ward 1 had three more voters than they had two years ago. Um, ward 2 was down 5.5%. Ward 3 was down 7.8%. Ward 4 was down 5%. Ward 5 was down 3.6%. Ward 6, which is a Republican ward, was only down 1.3%. Um, ward 7 was down 5.9%. Ward 8 was down 10%. Mm. Um, ward 9 was down 19.4%. Uh, ward 10 down 7%. Ward 11 was only down by a half a percent, and I have a theory on that. I've been saying Ward 11 for six years. I've been saying, watch Ward 11. Ward 11 is going to go Republican one of these years. And then Ward 12 was down 12.9%. Now, there's a couple reasons why I think... You know, I looked at it and wards one through five all went to the Democrats on the, you know, for um, Kavanaugh. And then wards six through 12 went for the Republic, you know, generally for the Republicans, went for Jay Roulet. Now, but what is interesting is just comparing things where Joe Lavasser got the mo one, because in most cases, Dan O'Neill got the top votes, which is okay. strange because he lost to June. Christiani. I think the Democrats, honestly, I think y'all picked the, your wrong candidate. Right. I think you picked the worst possible candidate of the three because June was the top vote getter two years ago. Dan O'Neill was the top vote getter this year in the at large, and Kavanaugh couldn't keep with it. So what's that say? Right. So Joe Lavasser won Ward 6, Ward 8, Ward 10, and Ward 11. So see, it kind of, you go, oh, that's interesting. Because I always find it interesting when Republicans <laughs> always think that Ward 12 is such a Republican ward. And I'm like, ah, I think you're overestimating Ward 12. I think you need to be watching 9, 10, and 11. Um, now, in some of these places, some wards, it kind of makes sense. So Ward 1 had basically the same amount of people come out two years ago as now. But yeah, um, Jay got like 250, easily 250 more votes than Victoria did two years ago. Excuse so me. that's a big number when you're only won by 488 votes, right? So why would that be? Why would Ward 1 shift so dramatically? Well, because of the alderman race. Chris Morgan was the top vote getter in Ward 1. It got more, you know, like he just, he, he drew out votes. He drew out Republicans. He drew out people to say, I like him, so I'm going to vote for his team, right? Hit the mail with Jay and Cap, right? So, and you can see the similar thing in, um, God, where did I see it? In uh, the wards that did not have races. Um, Ward 8, Ed Sapienza, had no opponent. They were down 10%. Oh, wow. Right? They were down 10% voters. So people didn't feel the need to Obligated come out and vote, right? Or motivated, and I in, guess. In Ward 9, you could say the same thing. I mean, there was Jose Mar... I don't know if his name is Marte, from who did run as a Republican for Alderman. But generally, you had James Burkish running for Alderman. That was a shoe-in. And Bob Baines running for school board with nobody opposed. Well, of course they're down 19% of voters. No one nobody cares, needed to come right? out. Nobody yep, yep, cared. Yep. Um... Same thing, I want to say, in one of the other places. But it was like, I, the places where, I mean, Ward 11 impresses me because it does, it is a d true blue-collar um, neighborhood. neighborhood. And I just think it's been year after year after year. Like, this isn't a one, this isn't, you can't only pat the people on the back, like, that we're out just in the last six weeks. Because it takes a long time to build up the need. And then on top of it, there was the homeless issue. And that was just, without a doubt, has to be, if you look at the numbers, and to be honest, like I said, I just don't think Kevin Kavanaugh was the strongest candidate. And his answer was always, I think we're doing the right thing. Stay the course. Stay and the we course. And we were all like, how about, and, no, and we don't want to stay like, the course. What? So as, as exciting as it is to have um, – a better major, a better makeup of the board of mayor and aldermen. Um, the school board didn't change. 
School board, we only got two Republicans out of 14 elected. How is that possible? And Brittany Ping had asked, said that to me in a text last night. And I said, well, because that sense of urgency just isn't there. We think it should be urgent in people's mind, the quality of the health, uh, school system, you know, the quality of education, how our schools are being run, et cetera, et cetera. But apparently it's just not at the forefront of people's minds. They're not like, I have to get out and go vote because of the schools. Where people did, I think, come out and say, I have to vote for change because of the homeless situation, because it was smacking them in the face every day. Right. Um, just as a... a and, and, you know, I mean, at least in Ward 11, obviously, you know, that's where and I Norm live. Did great. And Nor- Norm was, was knocking at doors. There's a lot. I know you're going to cough again. Um, there were a lot of people, same in my ward. Joy Seneca won the school board race, and she had been knocking a lot. Um, yeah, I mean, I was just going to say Norm actually did knock a lot of doors yep. and he knocked often. So I think he really saw the results of that. And, and in fact, when I went to vote around 1030 yesterday morning, we were actually up in terms of turnout yep. for, oh. for 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 that ward right. at the time. And you said, I think we we're only, only one, down by one, a half, half a percent. percent. Which does, so that makes sense. So I think Norm did the work that needed yep. to be done. Um, I'm more curious to be like, okay, great. Now what? Well, that's what I want to do. I made, a little, I made a little graphic. It's not anything special, but just to put it into perspective on the, I guess that's on the left-hand side. That's what our current makeup is. The light blue is the Democrats and the red is the Republicans. So that is when you're thinking about, are your taxes going to go up? That red section is saying no, right? When we're saying, can we crack down on homelessness? That red section is saying no. Now in fairness, Pat Long and Bill Barry and probably Jim Burkish a little bit um, are on probably the right side on the homeless issue. But on the um, on the far side, now we've got a split. So when it comes to things like the budget, um, there's a lot of work that the Republicans are going to have to do to come up with a budget that doesn't raise taxes because we keep making it harder and harder. Well, and also another place that maybe it could be helpful is – with this, uh, you know, you said there's no change on the school board mm. or no material changes on the school board, but we do know in the city of Manchester, the school board is one, trying to get their budget out from yeah. under the city budget. Um, and that's been something that's been troubling for a long time because, of course, Manchester, thanks to the hard work of people like Tammy and others, Tammy, Dan, Brink, yeah. you know, a bunch of people 10, 15 years ago now, 20, yeah. 2008. I think it was 2008. Yeah, so, so 15 um, years ago. Introduced a tax cap, which was a lot yeah. of work. That was a lot of like door to door, you know, just work, right? And, um, and so we have a tax cap in Manchester, which has actually protected us mm. from some of the worst yes. things that you might have had on that pie yes. chart over there. And now that it's more of a split, we can genuinely say, well, maybe there could be one better oversight yep. of the school board. Of course, the mayor actually does still serve yep. yes, on they, the school board. I think they tried the to change that. They, but, they tried. They wanted to do away with that. they couldn't get that done. And, and and I think what we should be thinking about now is, okay, what, what, what do we now? want to see? What do we want? Now, another thing I hadn't even thought about until we were just talking, and I was like, oh, yeah, that's interesting, too. So um, in the case of the tax cap, the only way to get that on the ballot for the voters to make decision, a vote on that, was to collect signatures because the aldermen refused, were not going to do it. That it does open up an interesting perk, like if you've got seven – Republicans with a few softer Dems, can there be things put before the voters in easier? Right. You know, because I wouldn't be surprised if we went back to, if the voters don't get the opportunity to chime in on whether um, the schools go back to a department. Oh, interesting. Go in the other direction, back to the way it used to be, that it's a department that responds reports to the board of mayor and aldermen, just like the highway department or, you know, any of the departments, public works, what all those ever, you know, um, it'll also be interesting to see what happens with our newly formed, you know, housing, homeless, <laughs> drug addict, whatever department, um, see what changes or, um, requirements, maybe what, right. what, 
demand for more. Like I know there I mean, was a big be, thing it, that the aldermen were unable to find out and get actual data. They're unable to see the data. And they all on our city attorney says, oh, it's all privacy and everything. Ah, I don't really know. When you're in school, if you sign up for certain programs, you're waiving that privacy. Why does it apply it to kids in education, but well, it couldn't apply to publicly funded everything else? I, you know, I was, I, I've been thinking about that because, you know, sometimes they just get everything uh, ass over kettle, right? right. Like it's everything thing is just a little backwards and it's like with this privacy stuff yep. it sounds a bit callous but i feel like well if you are getting government benefits you you waive your right to privacy because the point is you are you are receiving the largesse of other people's money right. to you so why would you get an a, an extra right that we don't well, have why, why is that um, why why is joe who's getting benefits through a homeless shelter any different than when we publicize city employee salaries. salaries. So city employees, they're, they're not, their amount can be publicized, but we can't know how much we've provided for Joe. Yeah, I, 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 really so, so, I think we use the privacy law. So, so it'll be interesting because like I, in my immediate thought when, when I heard all the news is I was like, oh, what would I want? from the city what, yeah. what have i fought what, over the last 15 years that i care about that i've lost on that maybe i could get back yeah. right and the two that immediately sprung to mind to me at least were the encryptions of the police scanners a, that's an interesting one that's going to be interesting because jay uh is actually pretty pro cop right uh, you know but so but thinking that the police scanner shouldn't be encrypted doesn't make us anti-cop cop. so i just want to so, be put so that would be an interesting conversation because the thinking there, of course, is uh, it provides a level of transparency when we know. And it's actually also not only transparency, but it's actually a little bit of accountability and a yeah. little bit of a way to actually just without much research, be able to know what's going on. Right? I like think, I was never into listening to no. it, but I know people who were citizen reporters for like 30 well, years and that's all they did was they listened to this else, That just gives people this connection to the police that they can, they know like, oh, those police are over there doing that. But if you don't have any idea, it's hard to be, you, so, you lose that contact. So that was the one. And then yep. the other one was all the surveillance cameras that they put up around City Hall mm -hmm. and that kind of stuff. So for me, you know, I was like, oh, are there opportunities to make sure that the, the government is transparent and telling us the things they should be telling us, whereas the citizens do get their right of privacy and their right not to be surveilled. Yep. So those were like immediate ones. And then I think with the Manchester PD, with their their um, the body cams, the body cams, like figuring out a little bit more about that and that whole thing yep, with Joe Kelly, where you know. So so those were my immediate thoughts. Then I was like. Okay, tax, tax rates. Yeah. I don't know what's coming down the pike, but, you know, I have started to see assessments for property stuff, and they're going up like 25%. But, but, and but people are like, oh, my God, my taxes went up like by three grand. You but, know? but assessment won't drive up your taxes unless only, only if a certain segment is driven up as opposed to because – you take the total assessment and that's what generates the rate. So in theory, the reason we had such a lopsided thing a few years back is the assessments on those four and five family apartment buildings went up 30% and your and my assessments went up 1%. You know, like we didn't go up. So our, so then the rates changes and the people who didn't see it, dramatic change their taxes went up minimally but those people whose properties went up 30 percent saw thousands of dollars in tax increases on the properties oh it'll be interesting <laughs> to see what we do like will they freaking get out of the way of uh, developers can can probably the ultimate, not probably not but can they at least try <laughs> can we me, guys. can Sorry. we make some headway on adus you know, like can we just do away with some of the owners can we get rid of the requirement so, that you have to get a permit to have a have a, a fire fire pit in your property. Come on. I mean, here's you know, like I'm just that's silly stuff to men. It's not in comparison to homeless. But what's it there for? Why? Why do we need to get permission to have an enclosed fire? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Just saying. Um, so 
uh, yeah, so those would be issues. I mean, uh, someone, I think this morning I heard on the radio or read somewhere that possibly, I think Manchester is currently set up as a sanctuary city. Is that correct? Um, I don't, think, we're, I don't think we are a sanctuary city, like but I think past we, ha stage, we have been soft, soft on, on yeah, everything. So, so that might be an area to look at as well. Well, I know um, I saw something the other day, Dan, Dan commented on it that, he was watching something on YouTube or whatever, and Massachusetts is like, well, if you're looking for places to put the refugees, you should be looking over there at New Hampshire. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, no, how about no. Massachusetts? You keep your own people. Yeah. See, it's so interesting. You wanted it, you get it. Because um, I was watching, I you know, I'm a realtor now, and so I was watching like some selling the OC or I don't know, some show on Netflix that's mostly a soap opera right. with some little bit of, of uh, real estate, real estate stuff. But Louis, my husband, was teasing me because he's like, man, this this is a soapy. Let's not pretend. And I was like, oh, no. But I'm listening for those little tricks that yep. the, the agents use. Yep. Something as simple as one asks the other one, how big is uh, this house? And I had seen the specs before the time, and it was 12,900 square feet. It was huge. I mean, it was like a $20 million yeah. property. But, you know, when the other agent answered, you know, she said, oh, just under 1300 right. And I was like, oh, oh file that away. Right. Or when you're asking for feedback and yep. you say to the person, well, you know, you generally really like this. Tell me more. Right. right? So you've already so primed you them. Yep. And I used to, I, I don't know if you realize, mm -hmm. I, years and years ago, I worked, um, I worked in the corporate office at Norwood Realty. In Norwood, they were like the biggest real estate in the state. And it was interesting things. I used to always joke about, everybody say, you'd be really good at being a realtor. And now maybe I could. And I used to always say back then, oh, no, I wouldn't because I couldn't lie to people. And they were like, it's not lying. I go, when you call that house um, quaint because it's teeny, that's lie. And it was I just, mean, no, I mean, but there uh, are buzzwords, you know, they're, like They're cozy. buzzwords. And obviously, I mean, you have an ethical obligation right. not to commit fraud. No, so you but it shouldn't just, be lying to your no. clients. But the reason I bring it up is... So this agency is called the Oppenheimer House or whatever, and it's in, uh, I believe, in L.A., right? Mm -hmm. And they always sold all these, like, thousand, you know, million dollar, $20 million, $100 million houses. Yeah. I mean, it's just bananas, right? But the property market is kind of crashing, right? Like, it's a hard time because interest rates have gone yeah. up. Interest rates have gone up because the Federal Reserve is trying to uh, slow down inflation because inflation is actually out of control and we have an unsustainable national debt. But these are all, like, these hot ladies, right? And every single one of them was complaining because California or the city of L.A. has introduced what they call a mansion tax. And it is uh, five and a half percent on you as a seller and then there's some cost to you as the buyer so suddenly you're looking at about eight percent that the government has just, just gets because you sold your house on top of stuff so the entire market for those luxury things everyone who's uh and and those percentages are on properties that are five million dollars or more which in so los everyone, angeles is not insane that's like don't think about four hundred thousand i don't think there is a four hundred thousand dollar house in los angeles no and 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 um <laughs> and so it was it was such a you know if, for folks back home who are sometimes like what are these economics that you guys talk about why does it matter it was such a beautiful just real life example of something that's like on Netflix yep. that any yep. person can watch and kind of understand because all these people were like oh it makes a massive difference when you introduce these weird taxes that then penalize the people because you know what's happening everyone is uh, repricing their houses yep. and the people who can get out are getting yep. out before it gets worse and the same is happening in Massachusetts they introduced a millionaire's tax and so the wealthier people in Massachusetts are like I am done paying my taxes yep, I'm gone. here I'm moving to southern New Hampshire yep. right that drives our prices up because those people that were paying I mean it's always been like the, the rental market outside of you know on the north side of Boston has always been significantly higher than New Hampshire so the closer you get to Massachusetts the more higher the rent prices are because those people can drive 40 minutes right and and, and live cheaper but then they're willing to pay more so then the prices go it's, it's and a now cycle. of course we we actually are living in a really exciting time where people can start to uh you can actually live 
in more remote regions, yep. thanks to things yes. like Starlink. And I actually saw they are now doing drone delivery. So, you know, one day your well, baby formula and your, your toilet paper can just... realizing that they don't need to spend office space. I mean, Dan works um, for a company here in Manchester. He doesn't work here. I mean, he walks into work one day a week because they've got this crazy rule now. That you have that to come in He has in to once. go in and it's like such, it's all a charade, but they have three floors of a building and they are on just one of the, the top floor, right? They're all, the two, other two oh. floors don't even have running water, but now they're renovating the second floor because they'll shift everybody down and then they'll get rid of the third floor. So I was reading an article about like, what do real, what do, developers do with all these office buildings because i mean we might have a couple of them here in manchester but you know you go to a big city and there's blocks and blocks of pretty much vacant building and i'm like yeah that's where you're built you should be building housing in those things we don't need to build on every square inch of new hampshire no i think we need to start converting and being a little more creative about you know yeah. the approaches we take which hopefully we can do with a little bit of new leadership and 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 an appetite for innovation yeah. right like we're so caught up in these paradigms where it's like this is how we've done things forever and i'm like why Maybe don't we, we need try to zoning right. moratorium for 10 years and actually even after two years if we notice oh this is a disaster you could restop it but you could actually provide opportunities to go, why don't we let the market work? Maybe we could privatize some services and allow people to be like, hey, I want to start a business doing X, Y, and Z, and then just let them do it, so get out of the way. I have a funny way. little zoning story. We so got two minutes. I know. Um, a couple days, last week we get a letter from the city that there's a, a zoning board of appeal meeting for a property on Varney Street. And I'm like, where is that? And it's a commercial thing and they want to add fencing and extra parking. And I'm like, on Varney Street? Well, <laughs> Tammy's like, what is well, this? No, we, I Googled it. We're like, what are you talking about? Oh, across the street from my house, there's a gentleman's house. And then next to it is like seven feet of land that is considered 191 Varney Street. But it's actually down there off of Dunham. It's down on the river. Okay. But their address is 191 Varney. Well, go lo, lo and behold, all those people down the hill, they didn't get notified of it because they don't live on Varney Street. They're not neighbors, even uh, though they're far closer. Of course, mm. Dan seems Dan gets his hair cut by one of them, so Dan was like, did you see this? <laughs> so I read through it, and I was like, you know, I just don't like the, I don't like the way it's pitched. Like, they want to add all this stuff because they were doing things that they shouldn't be doing with their property, and I'm not against that. But they make it sound like, well, this is this property could never be made residential. And I was like, mm, is that really true? So it'll be interesting. That hearing's tomorrow night. We will uh, Anyways, let you know next week how that goes. Thanks for joining us this yeah. week. And uh, we will Congratulations be to everybody who won their elections yesterday. And time to roll up your sleeves and get down to work. Let's do it. Bye.